My name is Liza Mundy. I'm a program director here at New America, which, as you know, is a nonpartisan, nonprofit think tank uh, and civic enterprise. Um, I direct the breadwinning and caregiving program, which is our sort of fancy word for uh, work and family. Uh, and the purpose of my program is to um, help shape policy and uh, help us move toward a world where both men and women can fulfill their breadwinning and caregiving responsibilities uh, more easily than many people find it possible to do now. Uh, we have a very exciting, uh, very distinguished panel here today to talk about uh, to talk about social policy, families, how better to help families, and to talk about the president's budget and some of the visions and markers laid down in that budget um, and, and, and moving forward. Uh, it's going to be a high-minded and distinguished event, but I thought, if you don't mind, if it doesn't seem too facetious, that I would start with sort of a low uh, culture reference um, and talk about briefly about something that I like to think of as the Jetsons fallacy. Um, I'm dating myself with this reference, but there was a popular cartoon in the 1960s that you may remember called The Jetsons. And uh, uh, I think I watched it fairly religiously because I remember it pretty vividly. Um, and it was a cartoon that envisioned a family of the future, uh, a family that was 100 years hence, so it was like 2062 or something like that. Uh, this family was, of course, living in space, because we'll all be living in space in 2060-something. Uh, they, of course, had flying cars, because we're going to have those any minute. And they were living in elevated, biz um, elevated buildings. They had uh, robot housekeepers, uh, you know, all the accoutrements that technology is going to give us any day now. Uh, so everything had changed. Um, there was a, you may not remember this, there was a two-hour work week. So George Jetson did go to the office, uh, but he only had to work an hour a day, two days a week. So technology was also going to set us free and give us a lot of free time. And I know that that is how you all experience technology in your lives. Um, the one thing that was not going to change, though, was the family. Uh, you may remember that uh, the Jetsons are a nuclear family. Uh, George Jetson is the family breadwinner. Uh, Jane Jetson, there was always a sequence in which he tried to give her some money in the morning to go shopping, and she would take his entire wallet, because that's what women do. Um, and, and so even though everything had changed, the composition of the family had not changed and apparently would never change. Uh, we know now that that sort of nuclear family of the 1950s and 60s was, in fact, an historical blip. Historians like Stephanie Kuntz have shown effectively that, in fact, that was not the way that the f human family was always made up. And we know now that, um, that it was sort of an artifact of, of that era. Uh, just to sort of quote some statistics, um, According to Pew Research, in 1960, 37% of households included a married couple raising their own kids, like the Jetsons. Today, only 16% of households fit that description. In 1980, 61% of kids younger than 18 were living with heterosexual parents in their first marriage. Now, less than half are. So families are changing. Families will continue to change. In many cases, that's a good and wonderful thing, as people have found their way into relationships that, that meet their, um, their needs and desires. Uh, the Jetsons also, I don't think uh, you know, any talk of same-sex marriage would have, would have really resonated in the 60s. And we've had that uh, very, very positive development. So many of the changes, I think, have enabled people to have more choice and freedom in their lives. But I think some of the changes in the family, 40% um, now of families are, are headed by a female breadwinner, uh, which is also a great thing in many instances. Uh, but in other instances, it's an artifact of the, the fact that um, high-paying high industrial jobs of the 1950s and 60s that were available to men are no longer so available. So many of the economic stresses uh, that have materialized in the past couple of decades have shaped and affected the family, um, in some cases in ways that have been not so positive. But our social policies, I think, are still rooted in the ideas of the 1960s that, that you're going to have a nuclear family with a male breadwinner and a stay-at-home or part-time working wife. And, and I think one of the challenges today, and it's a big challenge, is to acknowledge the changes that have taken place in the family and to update uh, and coordinate the social policies that serve families and affect families. And it's easy to identify social policies like 
welfare or um, you know the child the child care development block grant that that's that directly and specifically are designed to affect families but there are many other policies having to do with education or even small business that affect families and family formation as well and 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 one of the things that we've been endeavoring to do at New America is to bring together many of our programs to really talk about this. How do you, how do you think about a whole range of social policy with families in mind and family well-being and family formation? Uh, we're fortunate to have uh, funding from the Annie Casey Foundation and the Kellogg Foundation to engage in a really rigorous conversation about how we can update and coordinate our social policies to recognize changes in families, to support families in all their diverse forms, and to holistically address the family so that needs of parents and children are met simultaneously if possible, or at least so that social families serving children think about the needs of, of other generations as well. There's a lot of talk these days about a two-generation approach to families, or in some cases, a three-generation approach. At any rate, a multi-generational approach, and we'd like to be part of that conversation as well.